I just want to share with you a little bit of my heart and a little bit of my intention of why I have done what I've done in regards to confronting and exposing sin at within the ministry of Mike Bickle. Um, my heart is to speak to the community that has any way, form, or fashion been a part. As a student, as a church member, as a staff member, and of you who have been in the past and now even maybe are still there. Um, I want to speak to my intention and why I've done what I've done. But first of all, I just want to highlight the lawyer, Bosch Trevidian, and and then a tweet that he tweeted on X yesterday. First of all, though, he is a lawyer and I am a minister. And so we've been approaching this from a different vantage point from the beginning. He is a, a lawyer that I actually admire. He's a lawyer, so he's going to approach this from that vantage point. But he is a lawyer that has chosen to give himself to an incredibly dark part in focus in exposing darkness within the body of Christ. He has chosen to stand with those who have no voice and ability to speak to the powers within the church and the institution to be a voice for those who have no ability to be a voice to challenge the powerful powers of the leadership of the church. And he has chosen to do that and that is dirty, messy work that loves to be hidden. And he's battled all of his life to instruct, educate, and highlight this massive problem within the body of Christ. And I honor him for those labors. I honor him for the work that he's given himself to, to and how he has sought to educate the body of Christ. But I want to highlight he's a lawyer. And so he's approaching this from that perspective. I am a minister. And his tweet yesterday, um, it does not necessarily represent me. He has been a consultant to the AG group. He does represent certain women, but he's consulted us. And his, I'm going to say that actually much of his consultation has helped us. But I want to say my intent from the beginning has to first privately and then as it progressed, it's now become public, is to actually confront sin that was in the heart of the founder of the International House of Prayer. And in that, to expose sin. I had no idea, excuse me, this is kind of impromptu, I had no idea what we were getting into. I had no idea the battle this was gonna become. But I want you to know that my intent has never been to see the Internet House of Prayer destroyed. It has never been to tear that down. And that has been a perpetuated storyline that has been there and it's continued. That is not my heart. That is not why I've done what I've done. And that is not why the advocate group has done what we've done. I do believe that this man has sinned and that his sin has caused much damage. He built an institution, and within that institution, people have been hurt. And I believe it is necessary that all of us, we need to see the sin, name the sin, own the sin. I need to have understanding of even how have I perpetrated, continue to enable that man and his storyline. And I will be doing that for a while wrestling with it, working it through. But it has never been my intent to tear that prayer room down and it has never been my intent to destroy the incense of prayer that has been going forth in South Kansas City. I do think, and I am hearing this news, that there needs to be true uh, wrestling, true detoxing. And, and what were we a part of? And I believe that I'm hearing that is in the intent of the staff today. We need to do some work of working through what is the impact of that. But I want to speak. It has not been my desire to tear it down. It has not been my desire to destroy that place. 
But through this, I believe it has been the desire of Mike Bickle to sow confusion, to sow deception, so that a unified definitive statement cannot be made. And he would love for there to be one, two, three, four, five reports out there so that there is not a definitive statement. And I just wanted to share, that's my perspective, that is my heart. And the recent videos, the recent, excuse me, the recent articles that have come out this last week, I believe they only begin to paint this picture that the original Jane Doe brought forth. I want to say I 100% support the original Jane Doe. I believed her on the day, first day I heard this, and I believe her today. And she has come at great risk. She's been vulnerable, and it, it's cost her everything. But I am so grateful for her, and in this process, she has stood in the midst of the greatest whirlwind I've ever seen. To come before, to speak truth, so that we can confess our sins, and so that we can be healed. This is not in any form or fashion a statement that is conclusive of all my thoughts, but I do want to stay, say today, I do want to say now that my desire has been for the exposure of sin, the repentance of sin, and the, the healing and the redemption of all of us who have been a part at some form or fashion in your house of prayer. Much grace to you all.